I'm about to explode. Let me tell you what I mean. I know what I'm doing. I know nothing at all. There is no peace of mind. I'm lost, swimming in jealous slow motion, trying to find the way out. I'm young. I'm a thousand years old. I'm upset. I'm the happiest girl ever. I'm plain. Squinting, I'm half pretty. Things don't make sense. But this is all leading to something good. I promise. I promise. Someday it's gonna be so good I'll cry. It's gonna get better. Just wait and see. Tonight's gonna be fine. I have a Leonard Cohen album on which that's a song title, and I always liked it. Tonight's gonna be fine. Monday night, I took a shower and everything was grand. I'm perfect in a shower. I wrote an essay in my head, but forgot it all as soon as I stepped out and got dry. Earlier in the afternoon, I had suddenly started thinking about this one thing I did two years ago, and it was awful, the thinking. And so the day felt lost, and I felt itchy. But then I showered, and everything felt fine. Sometimes I wish I could just reach into my brain and switch off whatever nerve is making me feel this way. shampoo. Don't ask me what happened to March. March was when my right ring finger swelled up for no reason, and I went with my mom to the hospital and waited for four hours for a doctor to tell us my right ring finger had swelled up for no reason. And the same with February. February was when I was reading on the floor and found a hole in my sock. I like to read on the floor because it's relaxing. You can't go lower than the floor. The hole in my sock was unnerving because it was the second hole in a sock I'd found in a month. Socks don't belong in the trash but on the floor. A pitiable sight. Don't ask me what happened to February. I'm holding the months behind my back like I'm hiding something naughty. Time passes so quick it makes me come undone. This gap year thing is proving to be just as hard as I was afraid it would be. Tuesday night was like most other nights. I got into my pajama pajamas and watched something on Netflix to slow down my mind, lure it into sleep. But that didn't happen. I lay in my bed with my thoughts still going. Just me and my thoughts in the dark. Frightening. Sometimes I wonder if I should be an intense kind of person and work all through the night and get no sleep but emerge in the morning with bloodshot eyes and completed deliverable creations. Because lately, even when I'm relaxing, I'm not relaxed. 
Lately, I'm constantly freaking out, and it's absolutely ridiculous and exhausting. So why not be that intense kind of person and let my exhaustion get me somewhere? But instead... On Wednesday, we went to the bookstore, the one with the largest selection of English books in Tokyo. I'd been wanting to go. I needed to go. I found Tolstoy and Babbitt's were not fly. Oh well, some other time. Finding a book will be something to look forward to. I need that. Things to look forward to. I realize that even though I take the same paths to get places I need to be, I don't run into the same stranger. The city really is that big. Maybe it takes more than brushing by for strangers to not be strangers. On the train, an old man accidentally brushed my butt with his bag as he was leaving. I hate when people touch me on the train. I was in the mood for a sandwich, so I went to Midtown and got one. Then I got a coffee and I sat outside on a bench like I would all the time on campus. But somehow sitting on a bench alone in the city feels uncouth, whereas on campus it feels normal. People don't really do this here and I look strange. I feel strange. I saw a woman who looked like she'd walked out of a modern day day god painting with her little dog and a girl walking home from school. Both me and the girl looked at the man paving the road. The next day I was craving a muffin. This muffin crumbled and was too dry. So it's not so much that I was craving a muffin, but more something cakey. Cakey and bready and moist in the perfect way. Of course I felt upset with myself after I ate the muffin. And of course I ate the muffin in its entirety. I'm not good at resisting temptation, even if temptation is crumbly and too dry. And yes, of course the next day I looked for something more cakey and bready and perfectly moist. That's just the way I am right now. Diligent about what feels like the wrong things. Dearest Tokyo, here I am inside of you, eating muffins, reading books, and trying my best to be a good person. You're so beautiful, and I'm falling apart. Watching strangers in the elevator thinking, are they dating? Yes, of course they're dating, they're holding hands. I saw a drummer today and he was so cool. Just doing his thing absolutely on fire. Anyone who just does something like no one's watching is immediately attractive. I'm always aware of who's watching, because I'm always watching other people. Please help me from my lethal hyperconsciousness. My thoughts go fast like trains. Trains where men brush my butt with bags. And I get a stomach ache every time I eat. And it's like I'm eating all the time. Way too much. Yes, I remember the days where I used to not think so much about what feels like everything ever in the whole wide world. Bring me back to the fun days where I was fun and laughed easy. But tonight was nice. Please let me have more good days than bad. Oh, Tokyo, I promise I'll be good. I stayed here for a reason. I promise I'll see it through. I just need some reassurance is all. That it's gonna be okay. It was almost spring. I still wore my puffy jackets outside, and my feet still froze over if I sat at my desk too long, my excuse among many for why it was so hard to get work done. Friday was the day before I started learning how to drive. A full-on driving school I was going to go to, with lectures and driving sessions and all that. I was excited and nervous. Driving seems like a very grown-up thing to do. But as soon as I started to feel scared about it, I thought about the time I saw this vintage sky blue station wagon pull up next to us on the road. It was a young woman in the car. She had a short bob. Maybe she was wearing sunglasses, or maybe this is me adding sunglasses in my recollection. But her energy was such that she could have been wearing sunglasses. She was so cool. Just before the light turned green, she turned her head and saw me seeing her. I turned away, and she drove as we drove, and she got ahead. Someday. Someday I will be like her. Someday I will go someplace far and wonderful. Maybe with somebody next to me. And it will all be really, truly grand and perfect. But first I need to learn how to drive.
Everyone was on spring break, as I saw on Instagram. In the Dominican Republic, in Europe, skiing. On spring break, people go with their friends and swim with turtles and stuff like that. Meanwhile, I was walking out of a hospital with a silly, for no reason swollen right ring finger, with a craving for a latte, and with anxieties and dreams, and the conviction that the choices I'm making are good, the life I'm living is worthy, walking next to my mom. I can get carried away with shoulds and woulds and coulds about my life. But the fact was, all was fine. There was nowhere else I needed to have been. <laughs>